Maybe this will be Felix's like origin story. You know how they, the villain origin story is like losing to Maxime Cressy in the first round. Felix It is another performance to remember for the Canadians. All right, we're off and running. Episode 8, North of the Net by The Slice Tennis, a Canadian tennis show presented by Points Bet Canada. Stephen and Karina with you as always. Brennan McCarthy here with you. Uh, guys, I feel like we need to queue up uh, Only Time by Anya because it's a disappointing disappointing time <laughs> right now for, for Canadian fans. Our, our lead-off headline in our previous episode, episode 7, uh, it was can a Canadian win at Wimbledon. And um, no, they can't because um, – <laughs> I believe I had Dabrowski second on the power rankings, and she actually went the farthest. Um, I don't think anyone was expecting that. She was uh, ousted in the third round of the women's doubles. Um, but really, really disappointing showing for for all three. Obviously, Layla still uh, nursing her foot injury. But uh, let's start with Felix. I mean, really a, a tough, tough opening round opponent in Maxime Cressy Steven. Correct. Yes, that was the nightmare opponent. I've talked about it on the slice, and I was just waiting to get you guys on the show back on North Internet to really dive deep into what happened. But you're right. The answer to our previous show was no. None of them got even out of the second round. And I don't <laughs> want to be too hard on them because I'm sure they actually watched the show, and obviously they're sad enough. Um, but yeah, Maxi, like Felix, as you guys know, like how long did I rant about Felix on the last show about his chances of taking out Rafa? I was like, he's got the draw. See what he did against Rafa at Raf- in Roland Garros? And then... Maxime Cressy comes in literally like just that's like my that's gonna be maybe this will be Felix's like origin story you know how they the villain origin story is like losing to Maxime Cressy in the first round um yeah I had massive hopes for Felix based on his game for the clay I've talked about it endless, endlessly but if there's one guy who he couldn't execute his game plan against it's Maxime Cressy I guess because Maxime Cressy served a perfect match Acing, he, I think he served over 70% first serves in, which are, it's a huge first serve. But then the issue was that his second serve was just like slightly less hard than his first serve. So he's basically serving two first serves in. I think he had like nine double faults, but he's just, he's just playing the numbers game there, right? And then he's serving and volleying every single time, basically. And then he returned very well as well, Felix's serve. And Felix was like, Felix did nothing wrong. It was like four tight sets, and then it was just over. And that's the grass nightmare because you play a player like that and they can just not let you in it's kind of like playing curious like how do you break curious to serve how did Sitsabas just couldn't do it so it was like you just you are at the mercy of tie breaks and those can just go anyway so super tough draw for Felix tough first round I think you know he's still mad that he didn't win that first round because you know is a lower ranked guy but he's ranked like 45 I think 50 in the world Cressy so it's he definitely could have got a much easier opponent so d- depressing, disappointing, nothing else that you can say about it for Felix. And you just got to look forward now on to, on to the next. Yeah, Stephen, you actually, you got me so excited on our last episode. You were hyping up Felix and you were like the giving points left and right. And I was like going into it. Okay, okay. I was like, Felix could be the one to beat like Novak. And then he goes out and I'm like, well... <laughs> I know it was like a political speech. I, I was getting like the people riled up. Like it was like emotional. Like you, you're right, Benny. You could have put some like music behind it. But yeah, we need to keep it underneath, just kind of a subtle, subtle undertone. But like with Cressy, I mean, this is a guy who who caused Medvedev serious headaches uh, a few short months ago at the at the Australia, Australian Open. Yeah. I mean, he was just driving Medvedev nuts with the conventional serve and volley game, and I believe like three i think they went to four sets and then two or three went to a breaker so if you're if you're you know wrangling the you know number one player in the world in, in medvedev you're doing something right so he can go yeah. home happy in that regard and i believe it was Djokovic you said too like that that guy's neck game scares scares the hell out of me so he like for, for felix he didn't sue himself at all you know there's matches yeah. where it's like he did it to himself he's his own worst enemy yeah. but felix played well it's just yep. a, an awful, awful draw in to, yeah. to go up against in the first round. And the worst thing is, you know, the last thing on this, the worst thing is Cressy lost in the next round then to Jack Sock. Right. Like, yeah. Literally. And, and I'm watching that match. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. I was like, what? where's this guy when he's playing <laughs> our guy Felix in the first round? Like, where are you like, will it, like you have extra first round powers. 
And then he's like, Maxine Cressy's at the end of the match saying, he's like, I quit tennis to his box. I'm like, you this guy's kind of a crazy man. He's like, I thought he was like this total stoic. Like he's reading his book between every changeover, like his notes, you know what I mean? And then he's like freaking out of his box. He was like, I'm done. I'm quitting. Why do I, why did I even come to Wimbledon? As yeah. he's losing to Jack Sock in the second round after taking out our guy, Felix. Anyways, don't let, we'll move on. Cause I'm getting upset now. And uh, well, we are upset. Out. We had Felix. Most of us have Felix as our number one, in our power rankings and, and going to win it all. So it's tough. Yeah, it's tough true. pill to swallow guys. It is. Uh, uh, what so about, you- what about Shapovalov? I mean, he, he showed some serious resilience coming back in his first round match. And and then his second round, Brandon Nakashima, who was who was later going up against Kyrgios, uh, he I mean this is this is a scenario where the complete opposite of Felix, where Chapel kind of did this to himself. I mean, eight double faults to Nakashima's zero. So a lot of the a lot of the um, problems was on on Felix's own game, his own game. But uh, and then the same day, Bianca gets ousted as well so let's let's begin with with chapel what you what you see there steven yeah it was uh, you know it was this it, you said it right like brandon akashima is that that type of player who can't who's solid who's not gonna he's not gonna destroy himself and that seems to be chapavalov's kryptonite right now because it's always yeah. been the case that chapaval can like burn himself but when he was playing well like last last year at wimbledon like he played solid guys and he's just his game's too big and too much firepower for them like it could have been for Brandon Nakashima, but yeah, he just wasn't able to find that consistency. And, you know, I watched that match, but it was, it was just more of the same. Like it was just him missing too much, him not being able to put points together, like play four good points in a row. So he wasn't able to break as easily as he wanted. It was a battle, but yeah, just wasn't able to come up with a good, like, what'd you see Karina? Yeah. I honestly think that getting out of the first round in five sets was kind of an indicator that Shapo would kind of struggle a little bit as, as we went on, because that's really not what you want in the first round of a grand slam. Cause you don't want to really tire yourself out right away. Right, and right, then right. going up against Nakashima, who's actually a pretty solid opponent. And we've seen like flashes of what he can do. And then he kind of went further too. And like you said, Brendan, that he, he lost to Kyrgios, which is still like pretty impressive. Um, a performance overall at Wimbledon for him. So I was actually pretty nervous for that Shapo Nakashima match and rightfully so. Yep, rightfully so. And then as as you alluded to, Brennan, our, uh, the queen of Canada, Bianca Andreescu goes down and I was very hyped on her level going on in the grass. And then I think that's kind of similar to Felix. So that's just a tough draw versus Rybikina, who's still in the tournament. If you, if you remember, she's in the quarterfinals now. And she is, you know, massive serve. She's six feet tall. Like I'm six feet tall. Like, mm-hmm. That's that's tall. I think I don't know how tall Bianca is. Like probably five, five, five six. I don't know. Um, but six feet tall, bombs it, serve bombs it, um, forehand, backhand, and, and it was a really close match. It was again like she. I think Bianca, if I remember correctly, got broken at the end of the first set to lose, and then it was a tiebreaker, and she like you know broke back to get into that tiebreaker. Super close, just kind of a heartbreaker for her. She um she didn't do too much wrong, kind of like Felix and. And just lost to like a really you know tough player to play. I feel like she would have beaten everyone else that she would have played on that day, probably in the second round. But you know, Karina or Brennan, like that's the that's the ranking thing. Like right now, I think she's still ranked around 50, 60 in the world. So with that ranking, you're gonna play players like Rybakina early in slams, and that's just always way more dangerous. Yeah, Rybakina's such a tough opponent. She's so powerful. Like you said, like she's six feet tall. I remember when she was first kind of appearing on the tour, she was kind of the only player that could keep up with Serena Williams' power. And that's mm-hmm. when I was really noticing, you know, like her game. And she's a really tough opponent. So, yeah, I I, I thought Bianca could pull it off with the with the way she's been playing like recently. Absolutely. Yeah. Return to the court. But like you said, like it's a tough draw, tough, tough match. Um, so I don't think she should be too upset about it. Yeah, Ribikina was just broken in her quarterfinal matchup. But again, Bianca said it after after the loss. Like serve was just too powerful and she was getting to every shot. I mean, she was she was controlling the match throughout. And for really for, for all three, like tough early round opponents to, to go up against. Like usually it's like, okay, like I get kind of a I mean, the players probably don't think freebie, but we as we as fans and 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 you know, media writers think, yeah, it's a bit of a freebie, but they didn't really get that. Like you know, they're on their horse early on. And if you're going the distance early on, it's like you're going to be spent by the time you get to the second round. And that was certainly the case for, for Chapo and, and for Bianca. It was um, already a, a top tier player in Ribikina to go up against that um, kind of probably stunned her a little bit. Um, so 
on to on to U.S. Open for for three of the big four, and hopefully uh, Layla will be be joining the mix as well if she can get a few yes. more reps in. I believe she will be coming back to play in the City Open in mm-hmm. in August. Ideally, uh, we wish her the best in her recovery. But tennis still went on without the Canadians, obviously, and there are some thrilling matchups. Uh, what what uh, player? Oh, I guess we'll start with a player. What player has really stood out to you? Uh, thus far uh, non-Canadian well she's not in the tournament anymore but I I didn't want to give a shout out to Elise Cornet because she just ended Ika's 37 match winning streak in straight Facts. sets which was kind of nuts to me I remember watching I was like what just happened like I couldn't believe like I knew I knew Sviatek was going to lose at some point but not like this yeah, I didn't actually get to watch that match. I was devastated. I was on the train back from somewhere, but and then I was watching the Kyrgios, um, I think it's a fast match after that. But yeah, it, I think it got like I don't feel bad. You know, I don't feel too bad for her at all. I think she's happy. Like if you if you could trade losing at Wimbledon for like you know winning three months straight of tennis and you know a Slam like a Masters one a couple any tournament she played since March she won. So I think she's kicking her feet up now. And yeah, that's a great person to be. Um, impressed by Karina. But to answer your question, Brendan, I think I'm most impressed so far by Taylor Fritz. And it seems like a bit of a random one, maybe. Hasn't lost a set, though, in Wimbledon so far. Can't say that for Djokovic. Can't say that for Nadal. And I don't know. His match is starting, yeah, well, his match is after the, the Anis Mova Halep match today. But people are talking like he's like an outside. And some of these commentators who come in and they only cover the slams, I'm like, I don't think he's even that big of an underdog against Nadal right now. It's like It's like his game is huge he won their he, last matchup he beat him in um in indian in wells Indi- you're right in the yeah. final and people are like oh rafa was injured so was taylor he like rolled his ankle in the match before mm. they were both banged up and taylor just has the type of game that he can hit huge from backhand and forehand and the serve and the only thing that i feel is a, a risk for him he's just not the greatest mover in general but the game kind of makes up for that and on, on grass that's historically the type of person that's taken out nadal at at wimbledon is you know, big hitters and, and Federer and Djokovic. So um, we're both like, you know, big hitters in their own, but they're also just, you know, overall perfect tennis players. Um, so yeah, I've been pretty impressed with Taylor Fritz, um, his mentality, you know, it's kind of funny, like on the pop culture side, like he's part of the Netflix crew. So is Kyrgios. So I don't know how these guys just all of a sudden are playing way better now that Netflix is around, like conspiracy. Um, no, I'm kidding. But then also Taylor's girlfriend is... Um, like she's mm-hmm. like big TikTok star. I don't know. Like, I don't know. My, my wife follows her on TikTok. And so it's kind of like I get updates from my wife about what Taylor Fritz's camp is doing because he sees it from like, she sees it from, from Morgan, who's a, his girlfriend. So uh, I don't know. It's kind of just interesting. Like it's a very like Americanized, like look into the tennis world and yeah, Taylor's playing very, very well. So it's, I'm very excited for that match today. And I've been really impressed by Taylor Fritz. Yeah, nice. I actually just found her TikTok page the other day and I was like looking at all of them. I was like, this is nuts. Like I've never thought about tennis in that sense before, or, like from that perspective. I was like, this is so interesting. And like one of her most viral TikToks is making tennis cool again, which is. Yeah, it's kind of like a show into like, because you're right, like we all know how the tour works. But like if you actually, exp- there's a lot of new tennis fans who are kind of like, what? When is this tournament happening? Why is it like this? Like, yeah, yeah if you can explain that to the general audience like this is why tennis is weird because we have these systems, like you know this is how it works like i think it's pretty uh pretty palatable for any sports fan mm-hmm. uh what about what about and and i want to get both of your opinions on this the most intriguing match so far for for, for me i'll just answer briefly the city pass curios match like full of controversy um a lot of beef going on in the in the post-match presser Stefano was calling Kyrgios a bully, which I kind of I was I was kind of laughing uh, laughing at a little bit because it's like, well, you chucked a ball, you whipped a ball uh, at a fan and then deliberately tried to like nail Kyrgios. So Kyrgios is times. just yeah, <laughs> Kyrgios is just times, standing yeah. there. It's like, look, I know I, I like look. He plays a game that just toys with other players. Like he'll, he'll pull off like just the most lethargic shot that might make Sports Center. But then he'll be like, oh, here's a costly error or like a double fault. I, I want to do a backhand for like or a forehand, underhand, second serve, and I duff it in the net. Like probably for his coach, it's like, ah. But yeah. you know, if you're if you're an opponent, like, you know, I'm sure all of us the same too. It would it would drive us nuts trying to play curios. But in the end, 
Stefano's lost, so obviously he's going to be that much more heated. But still, yeah. a it's still a, a phenomenal match. And Kyrgios is is uh, off to the off to the quarters for the first time at a Slam since 2015. So that's probably my most. I'll answer both at the at the top of the yeah two questions I asked. Most intriguing player is, is Kyrgios for me thus far in that match. Kyrgios and Stefanos was was certainly certainly uh, fun to watch. Yeah. The same match for me. Kyrgios Tsitsipas was the most intriguing. I was like emo- I was like heated during that match. I don't know yeah. why because I was in Stuttgart with both of them, uh, watching their matches like courtside and like interviewing them after the matches. And I'd actually like talk to Tsitsipas like outside of the interview room. Like we, I walked by him. I was like, "Hey man, like I didn't mean like we kind of discussed like a question I asked." And I showed him like a video. I've talked about it of him on the grass, and I was like, "Dude, I think I think your game's like perfect for the grass." He's like, "Yeah, I do too," and I think he's a really nice kid. And he is definitely more like sheltered in life it seems like than Kyrgios and like they just come from kind of different worlds um but that match was crazy I do think Kyrgios is a bit of like it's unsportsmanlike to like complain to the umpire and like basically go on and on and on and on about stuff which is like it's like problematic in its own sense like it's like Mm -hmm. he should have been given more warnings by the umpire he got one verbal obscenity warning do you think he only swore once on the court that people heard (laughs) no let's let's get real here but I get it. It's an inter- it's an it's it's a show. But he's so distracting for the opponent, and that's what triggered or got Sitsipas off his game, which is the fault of Sitsipas. Like you just can't let that happen. Like he, I know it's easy, I know it's annoying, but Sitsipas did get so rattled, and then all of a sudden he was he got broken in the second set, and then that's when he kind of started to he, you know you're, you're just angry like guys get in the tennis match. But like yeah, he hit the ball into the crowd, almost hit somebody, and then and then Kyrgios keeps going on. He should be defaulted, and that made Kyrgios even more or sit about even more mad so then he started roasting balls at him which is totally in the rules and it's hilarious i think but yeah i don't know i don't i don't feel bad for either of those guys really you know at the end of the day they're both multimillionaires playing tennis and it was a great show um so yeah so a, that was definitely the most intriguing match of the of the tournament so far what yeah it was, it was great theater man you use that a lot in sports like that was great theater like that's like theater, grab yeah. your popcorn you're gonna get all the bells and whistles to this match it was totally. weird too because they were friends before that like they were, they were kind of buddies. So now I was like, mm, that must be kind of awkward. But um, they were definitely. I had buddies. my match. Sorry, what? No, yeah, you're right. They were buddies. I, I they don't. Were, yeah. And then yeah, they had some funny stuff. Like sits it past like leaked Kiros's phone number over Instagram to like everyone. So curious. I did like, and Kiros was like, "Haha, you're such an idiot." Like they like had a friendly relationship. Yeah. And go ahead, Green. But I think they'll get it back. You know, things blow over on the court, and then you can hopefully shake hands afterwards. I don't know. Mm-hmm. hopefully um but yeah i had my most thrilling match so far was kind of recency bias i chose Djokovic center um mm. just because i like even though center went up two sets and i was like can he do it but i was still a little bit nervous because novak's gonna novak at wimbledon too especially and then we saw it kind of just fall apart but i was like i was like holding on i was like okay he dropped the third set okay just take this next one it'll be fine yeah. but yeah no eventually it was i like i knew center would push Djokovic to like his limit but uh the way that it happened was kind of disappointing but also mm-hmm. thrilling yeah it's uh it was disappointing i thought you know i mean it's it's amazing to watch Djokovic do what he does he really had a weird first couple sets that are just off his game and center was playing great um and then it's always the debate like unfortunately we've seen this type of comeback um from the greats like Djokovic and Nadal against against the young guys. You could think of Sitsipas French Open final, Musetti that same tournament, Medvedev Australian Open final up two sets to love. Really, you should never lose a match when you're up two sets to love as a professional tennis player. Yes, it's obviously going to happen, and it's way harder when you're against a big three member. But yeah, Sinner um, Sinner definitely kind of went away there a bit. He like his f- first serve percentage in the last last two sets, for example, forty four percent in the fourth set. 50% in the second, in the fifth set, you cannot beat one of these guys serving that low of a first serve percentage. It's just impossible. So, and that's just, that's gotta be tightness. That's gotta be pressure and yeah. Learning experience for center. And yeah, one of the most insane backhands I've ever seen from Djokovic at one point there where you saw the wings out. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was nuts. Absolutely nuts. So yeah. Okay. Quickly, before we get to our uh, most popular segment, ACE slash fall to the week, what quarterfinal matchup will you guys be uh, queuing in on today? I know, I know when we're recording, some are starting to um, get going right now, um, especially on the women's side. But which uh, which, which matchup? Simona I was Halep. like, I have a off feeling. Air, we're, yeah, off it, air, we knew yeah. that. We know Karina's already. <laughs> yeah, as soon as as soon as we're done, I'm like, 
darting to the TV and see right to Simona's happening. match. Love it. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah it's gonna be a great and honestly i will also be darting that's a great match and then i'm i'm mostly excited for fritz uh nadal just because i think it's gonna be a battle and i think fritz has a real chance and you know i love watching nadal play on the grass as well djokovic nori will be pretty juicy too i mean djokovic he's thank god he has some time off after that five set heroic comeback but uh man i i just to briefly go back to to center i mean like up two sets to love you got to bury him there, but when you're going up against basically Thanos, uh, players <laughs> like in the, players in the players in the top five, they have the ability to, to flip that switch, man. Any anytime, anytime they want, and Djokovic did that, and he taught uh, taught Sinner a lesson. My boy is also a fellow fellow ginger. I was I was I was, I was going to um, sprinkle a little bit of money, live money on that match, but uh, or yeah, live. You guys know what I'm trying. You still, to say. did you you put in, the money in match curious, in match right? betting? Pardon me. Did you put the money on Kyrgios like you said you would? That's that's in the bank. That's that's an outright winner for me. <laughs> Kyrgios, Kyrgios to win it all. So, and I, I believe he still has the third best odds. It might have went up to yeah. plus one thousand according to points by Canada, but yeah. Well, so. if you did put money in, like you should be able to cash out now for like a, a profit. No, uh, I'll have to check. I haven't checked this morning, but that's what maybe. I always do. Is like would do like outrights before the tournaments on points by Canada, and then like yeah, like if they're like in the semifinals or and I don't think they're gonna win the next match, I'll just like cash out but you know he's got a great chance against um he's got a great chance against garen today or yeah today today so i don't know that's a good bet brendan we'll see we'll see nikki um, <laughs> yeah all right let's get to ace faults of the week we'll start with karina yeah so you kind of alluded to my ace of the week but i honestly had cam nori going into the semifinals. i think Ooh. it's really nice <laughs> I think it's really nice to see a Brit like going far at Wimbledon right now. And you can tell like that roar from the audience when he won his match was absolutely incredible. Like you can, you could have feel the energy like through the TV. And I just think it's so nice. I think Nori's been probably one of my favorite players to watch in the last six months. I think especially on hard court, but like, so now it's nice to see him doing on grass, but I think he's just a really special player. And so yeah, all the best luck to him. That's epic. What's your fault of the week? My fault of the week. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw this, um, but it wasn't at Wimbledon. It was. I'm just pulling up the tweet now. It was. Um, I'm trying to remember what tournament it was. It was a challenger ter- tournament, and um, the player. I, I think how to pronounce it. Ymir. Yeah. Yeah. Ymir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he destroys the TV camera yes. because he gets he gets upset after hitting like an unforced air and he's like hits the ball and it smashes the TV like the camera glass. It falls all on the court. The umpire has to leave like it's a whole situation. And I'm just watching this like, are you kidding me? Like we're doing this again and it's again on the men's side. Like when mm. are we going to start like disciplining these players or like I don't know. It just seems like they're getting away with it every time. That's like, I don't know. That's cra- That's a crazy one because if you've been to those challengers, there's like no stands around there. That's literally just like a little camera up on a pole basically. And the video is yeah. crazy. Like makes you like jump back. Cause it like literally comes, the like, right, comes right at smashes you. Smashes the camera. It looks fake actually to me. Like it looks like a fake video, but yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think we're ever going to stop players from roasting balls out of the crowd or out of the stadium. Um, <laughs> But I know what you mean, Korean. I know I, I definitely know what you mean. My ace of the week, you know, you guys know I'm a big Federer guy. When Federer made an appearance back on center court there for the for that for that ceremony, literally we haven't heard a bigger roar at Wimbledon. Um, all sharp time. dressed like, man, so, sharp, sharp dressed man, dress absolutely. Man. Like it was like perfect. Like the little shadow of him coming out, the last person in. People kind of didn't know if he'd be there or not. People were psyched, and uh, yeah, that was crazy to see him back there. I hope to see him back on the court soon. He actually will be playing at a tournament about an hour from my house here in the fall. So. I'm going to do everything in my power to get there, obviously. Um, and then my fault of the week was the, I don't even know. It's like something to do with Kyrgios. Like he's just like, like I'm a big Kyrgios guy, but like, he's rubbing the wrong way this like week. Which one would you like to choose from? from like, yeah. Every, well, he also just got called the court for like, uh, you know, a civil assault yeah. allegation. Um, you know, I don't want to comment too much on that because obviously like it's just out of tennis and it's just like, I don't know. I've seen their relationship play out over Instagram. <laughs> And it's kind of just crazy, but um, like him in the press conferences, like he's just like, he's just like, seems to be like, you know, he said any publicity is good publicity when this journalist was asking him like, so why don't like, you know, the rules about Wimbledon, like, why are you wearing a red hat mm-hmm. on court? And he's just like, yeah, he's like, I do what I want. And then the guy's like, oh, so you're above the rules. He's like, well, no, <laughs> he kind of just got pwned by this journalist. And he's like, he's like, well, no, it's just that 
I, uh, and it, I don't know. It, it seems like, I don't know. To me, he's rubbed me the wrong way this week somehow. I don't know. I feel like he might see our show and be like, like, come at me. I'm, I'd welcome it. We'll invite him on the show and we'll and go we'll debate. I would love it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, fault of the week is some of the antics of Curios, but the play of his week has been amazing. So, let's I think once we surpass ten episodes, it's time to start bringing on some guests, even maybe That's some fast. some players. Maybe your maybe your boy Holger Rune. That'd be a nice little touch, potentially. Um, so my ace fault of the week is is together because the ace goes to Venus and the fault goes to the reporter who asked probably the dumbest <laughs> question uh, ever in the history of of sports media. So basically. Little little summer here. Venus, Jamie Murray, together in the mixed doubles, they won their first round. And then the reporter was basically like, are you here for the experience? Or are you just basically trying to top what your sister Serena did and Jamie, your brother did, Andy, back at 2019 Wimbledon when they got bounced in the third round. Correct, Stephen? Yeah. Was it? I thought, yeah, third round. So it's like, are you basically just going to try and top that whatever they got to and then just call it a day? And Venus was like what like what do you like yeah no like we're just kind of here for like no like what what player just comes in is like you know what i'm just kind of here like you know go for a nice walk like, see how like, we first do first off we're better than them <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and i think like jamie said it too he was just like like he kind of said it under his breath but like well we're better than them but like you see what he was trying to do he probably just saw king richard and got super hyped with like you know <laughs> 97 venus and serena and was just like i'm yeah, gonna try yeah. and get a juicy juicy sound bite here but venus didn't want anything to do with it and, and then was basically like, okay, like, are you going to write a half decent article or a full one? And <laughs> uh, yeah, he just, but he kept going, man. He, he was, he was persistent. So it was, uh, it was kind of nice to see that, to see the Venus quit back considering she, you know, she was out for a year battling, battling a respective injury. So um, nice to kind of see that. Nice to always see like the player and, and reporter back and forth. Could you imagine like they, they, they won, like they won the, like, or even got to like, the semis and when and they came yeah. back like hey like i noticed you just wrote like half that article you you are you like you buried the lead you didn't you didn't say like who won like that would have been hilarious but um yeah, i guess they ended the articles up, are terrible <laughs> yeah i guess i guess they ended up getting um eliminated in the in the second round uh, okay. in straight sets so um pretty funny man i yeah. i uh i love i love seeing that you never usually see venus uh quit back like that so that definitely made uh, major major headlines yep so I think that is the show. Is that right, folks? It is. Take us home. That is the show. So yeah, that's uh, it's been that's a good wrap up. I think of the Canadians' chaotic performances at Wimbledon, which has been absolutely chaotic the whole time. It's the word I've been using over and over and over. It's kind of like a half tournament. Half the top ten guys are there. It's weird. It's whack. It's wild. But this has been north of the net, trying to piece it together for Canadian fans. So yes, as Brendan said earlier. We are looking ahead to the North American hardcourt swing as Canadians looking to dominate that win the U S open again. One of our, one of our singles players we'll see. So anyway, stay tuned for our next episode of North of the net and follow Brendan Karina and myself on Twitter. We'll see you on the tweets. Felix It is another performance to remember for the Canadian team.